Ellie, Ellie in particular looks like a different person. Is yeah, he's totally different. I mean, is, it, yeah, is he growing into what you want to go? Yeah, like? because he's smart. You know, he got he got a great gene in his body that gives him a, a, a uncanny advantage. So. He um he's good man he, he did a, he did a, he does a good job and he's able to go in the room and talk and speak the language he knows exactly where he's supposed to be he knows exactly where everybody's supposed to do and their responsibilities and he's a guy that honestly gets playing within play playing within the system he honestly understands that so he's very rarely he's out of position uh, of course we just got to get him bigger to take on linemen to get off and, and rip off the blocks but as far as when it comes like a, a perimeter game playing in space and doing his job he's doing a pretty good job. Writing about red shirting, I mean, just a couple of your guys I wanted to ask you about. Uh, Kenny Bynum, you know, he, he had the red shirt, I guess. But are, are you glad that he's got two yeah. years left instead of just one? Yeah, I mean, he's he's I mean, he's doing a good job for us. He, he understands where he's the guy that understands where everybody's supposed to be. And I, I told him that's going to be his that's going to be his uh, his uh, his edge. His edge will be the fact that he knows where everybody's supposed to line up. He's got experience. He's played in the big games. Uh, and he knows how to speak the language of the of the Mike linebacker, and that itself is a job within itself. So, we you know he his, his pride is to be the smartest guy in the room, and understanding that you know you don't have to go out there and make every single play, yeah. just do your job. Yeah. And uh, if he does that, then they give him a chance. What to about play. Gavin Bryant? You know, he chose. Ga Richard Gavin is, is a great. I mean, again, a great example of a guy that's uh, hadn't had much football, uh, hadn't been on the field much for us, but I tell you, he's really he's coming on. I thought last week, uh, excuse me, last practice. So he did a good job. He lined up. He lined us up. He was able to communicate. He slowed down. He, he got he got the verbiage out, and he made some plays. So again, uh, you know, he, he makes some plays, and in the day, he took a couple setbacks. But again, I, I, that's what I expect. I expect there to be some highs and lows, and ebbs and some flows with him. But the, the more I keep putting him out there, I think the more he'll grow. What about last year, the decision to, to redshirt him? What, what I think it was a good him? idea. You know, just to put him on special teams. He wasn't ready for to go out there and start uh, and, and play that uh, yeah. that mic position, yeah. and just go out there and put him on special teams would be unfair okay. for the kid. Uh, but for, I, I tell you, you know, he's a, he, he has a lot of pride, and uh, like I said, when he knows where he's supposed to go, yeah. he's a force. Okay, thank you. Yes. Sir. With, with now with Chris Weather working some at, at end two and moving around, mm -hmm. is there, I guess, any concern about taking a guy who needed to learn more of the playbook last year and now putting more on him, or, or is it just yeah, something he's got to do? Yeah, remember he came in late. He didn't get into it in the summertime. But, uh, and he had a role for us, especially on third down, when bringing him off the edge and spying the quarterback. And he was really good at that at that role. We kind of moved him back to defensive end because he's really a, a elite pass rusher. And then on big, kind of doing what we did with Kirk, son, was when bigger personnel put him at the same linebacker. But when uh, when you're playing against uh, our type of offense, which is a majority sub, we're going to play him at the defensive end position to get him a chance to get out there and help us. Can, can coaching sometimes be as simple as, you know, watching film and saying that number 42 runs really fast and creates yeah, a lot of habits, so you, let's you, get him on the field. you got to figure out a way to get him on the field because he does have a trait that it uh, Nobody on our team possess. I mean, he doesn't. He, I mean, he's in, in, in really unbelievable shape. He can run from sideline to sideline and play four quarters in the same speed he was in the first quarter. So he, he does have a trait of rushing the passer and and, and pursuing the ball from sideline to sideline. Uh, we just got to get make sure you know we keep you know, bringing him along as far as bringing him off the edge and then putting him in some linebacker positions in certain personnel. I heard you talking about Gavin Bryant earlier. Are there any of those? I guess non Jalen Reeves may have been linebackers who look like they're taking steps forward, who look like they're saying, okay, I want to be that now he, second or third guy. Yeah, he's a guy, I mean, he's a guy that we uh, that, that we like a lot because you see him on special teams and you, you know, he concussed people, he knocks them out. And if you, if you ask the kids on our team who's our hardest hitting linebacker or our hardest, hardest hitting player, most of them will tell you it's Gavin Bryant. So we just got to make sure that we, uh, we slow it down for him, uh, bring him in the meeting rooms more and talk to him one on one. Uh, because again, he, he wants to play. He wants to be the guy, uh, and so again, he just need more reps and more experience and uh, and a little bit more success while he's out there. So we're, we're very high on Gavin uh, because again, he can, we know he can help us in, this, in every special team that we got. We like for him to be able to help us at that mic position. How about Dylan Bates? Is he still in the middle, or is he moving? Yeah, he's, no, he's, still, he's still in the middle, but he, you know, he's still deemed up. He does he's not 100 percent. So it's under you know what we got to do is make sure we don't sit him back. Uh, you know, he's not 100% as far as, you, can, you know, the strength is not there yet. So we just got to be wise in how we use him. He's really smart, really cerebral, very athletic. Uh, he has a lot of pride for the game. So, um, yeah, we're going to put him in some situations, but 
if we don't want to put him in the game and, and set him back four or five months where we can't use him for next season. Coach Jancic was just talking about moving Chris Weather down to the defensive mm -hmm. end spot. Was that somebody you were like, hey, wait a second. <laughs> Did you try to fight for him to no, keep no, him with your unit? No, he, he has he has an ability that nobody on our team has. He, he, can, he really has an, uh, a knack for rushing the passer. And when he knows what he's doing, I mean, there is nobody that is, is better uh, as, as Chris. He can pursue. I mean, he can be on one side of the field and in the, in the short side of the field, and he can get it all the way to the other side and then come back the next play and give you the same kind of effort. Now, that's a rarity. Most guys that you see in this game can't take you from sideline to sideline every single play. Well, Chris, Chris is, uh, is, is in uh, really, I mean, really, really good shape and really well conditioned. Uh, a rarity where this guy can play at a high level uh, for 60 minutes. So. Uh, but having him rush the passer and then be able to contain the quarterback, especially in the day, in, the, in today's game, is really important that we have him on the football field. And, and at defensive end, that's the quickest way we can get him out there.